All right, hello everyone. My name is Ronan. I work here at the Colony Public Library. Today we're going to be continuing our science experiments, our science videos, and we're going to be talking about meteorologists. We're going to be meteorologists today. Do you know what a meteorologist is? So a meteorologist is a scientist who studies weather. We have weather all the time, right? You can think of lots of examples of weather. You can think of sunny days or rainy days, sometimes snowy days, or even extreme examples of weather, right? Like thunderstorms, tornadoes, hurricanes, all that stuff. So we have really mild examples of weather, extreme examples of weather, but regardless, we have weather all the time. We always experience weather every second of every day, even if it's just like kind of a boring, normal, sunny day. That's still weather, right? Um, so weather happens because of air. So meteorologists actually study the atmosphere. They don't just study weather, but they study the atmosphere, which is all the air that surrounds the Earth. So air must be pretty important if meteorologists study the atmosphere, study the air inside the atmosphere. So what is air? If you remember from our chemistry science experiments, we talked about matter. Do you remember that definition of matter? It's anything that has mass and takes up space. And we figured out that air is made of matter because it takes up space in our lungs. We tried out a quick science experiment, filling up air in our lungs. Let's do that again really quick. Let's breathe. And don't breathe it out. Breathe in again. Ah, oh, let that air out. We could feel the air filling up our lungs and could feel that expansion of our lungs as it let the air in. So we know that air takes up space because it takes up space in our lungs. So air is made of something. It's made of a lot of gas particles and molecules and stuff. Um, air is a something. And it has a big effect on the weather. And we're going to see that today in our experiments. We're going to see how air changes with temperature, which is one of the big major uh, contributions that air has to weather. So let's get started on our experiments today. You're going to need some hot water. We made hot water with boiling water, so if you have like a kettle um, or a pot of water, please have an adult help you with this to make some boiling water. And we'll need some cold water, so you can get water from the tap and then add some ice to it to make cold water. You'll also need an empty water bottle or empty bottle of some kind and a balloon, and I have a little balloon um, blower upper, but you can just use your mouth. So we don't want to blow up the balloon completely. You just want to kind of stretch it out a little bit so that it's ready to take in some air, and then we'll let the air out. All right, and then you will take the bottle and wrap the balloon over the lid of the bottle carefully like that, and so just kind of stretch it out to make sure that the air can get through. All right, so we have a bottle with the balloon, right? But let's cause, call this, let's call this a closed system. So that means that the air that's inside there now can't escape, and the air that's around us can't go in. So this is closed off from the outside world, basically. So whatever air is in here is the only air that's going to be in there. All right, and we're gonna see what happens when we put our balloon and our bottle, our closed system, inside the hot and the cold water. Do you want to try it out? All right. So before we do that, we need to make a guess, right? Do you remember what that's called, a scientific guess? That's called a hypothesis. So we need to make a hypothesis on what will happen when we put our closed system inside the hot water and then inside the cold water. What do you think will happen? So you can write this down. You can tell your parent or adult that's with you, you can tell your sibling, or you can keep it in your head. So let's make a hypothesis really quick. What will happen when we put this closed system in the hot water? All right, do you have a hypothesis? All right, so let's put this in the hot water, and we're going to give it a few seconds. It'll take a few seconds for it to, to do its thing. Um, so observe while we're, while we're watching this. What does observe mean? It means we are going to use our senses to see what's happening. So we'll spend a few seconds watching our experiment uh, take effect. All right, you ready? Okay, 
So that was pretty interesting, right? Did you guys observe that when you put it in the hot water, the balloon got bigger? And then when you put it in the cold water, the balloon got smaller? What was happening there? So remember I said this is a closed system. So that means the air that's inside this balloon bottle container can't escape. So it can only stay inside this container. So what happens is that air behaves pretty similar to how we behave when, when the temperatures change. So when it's hot outside, do you guys like to wrap yourselves up nice and tight with your blankets and quilts and you bring your pets and your friends and your parents in close? No, it's too hot for that, right? You spread out. You're like, get this blanket away from me. Get away from me. I'm way too hot for this, right? And then when it's cold in the wintertime, that's when you get all cuddly and nice and tight, right? So that's kind of how air behaves, too. So when air is in a warm and hot environment, it expands. It spreads out. It pushes against all the other air molecules. And then when air is in a cold environment, it contracts. It condenses, and it comes close together. So we can see that when we put the bottle in the warm water is that the gas inside the balloon started filling up. It started expanding and pushing against the balloon. And then when we put it in the cold water, it started to condense and it came close together and the balloon fell down because there was more room in the, in the balloon now so it could fall down. So we can see that in our experiment, we can see how air behaves in temperature. So that was pretty exciting, right? In our next video, we'll see what happens when cold and hot air come together and we'll see how that affects the weather. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye.